Mr. Bialystok! Mr. Bialystok! I'm back! I'm back. I've changed my mind. Welcome to the Fox Hollow. My name is Skylar Wyndham. And yeah, it's been a while. Um, a lot of really terrible things happened to us. <laughs> back to back, of course. Um, if you watched like a previous vlog where I explained what happened. But yeah, I don't really want to rehash that in this video. It's just YouTube was not the priority during that season of life. Um, but I'm very happy to be back and share my story. And I'm coming back with like the original mission of the channel. Um, so I guess in this I could say I'm going in a new direction than what I was previously posting. But ultimately, actually, it's like getting back to the root of why this channel was even started to begin with. Um, and that, like, if you were to look at the very original videos, um, they were actually podcasts that I did with my sister. And we started this channel to have fun. Like, we started this channel kind of to do some self-development stuff and help people, um, but, and also just have fun. Like, we just wanted to have a good time. Uh, play board games, play video games. Um, we just do some vlogging. <laughs> I don't know. Like, we just wanted to have fun together. And that's why we started the channel. Uh, during the pandemic, obviously, things just got a little wild and I felt frustrated. And I just wanted an outlet to vent my frustrations. And the pandemic was very stressful. <laughs> um, and I have no regrets about that journey that I took to talk about those things. But the thing is, in this season, I realized, like, I want to be proactive. I want to be empowering and inspiring. Like, my mission is to empower and inspire people to live fulfilling lives. And to realize that you're already empowered, like, you're already free. Um, as, like, a libertarian girly, like, I want to inspire other people to realize that you're already empowered. Like, you're already free to live your life to its fullest potential and I don't want to be reacting or be reactive to negativity to things that I'm like eh that's not really the vibe like I don't want that in my life do you want that in your life and there's so many channels out there that do that and that's their vibe that's their task but it's not mine and what I want to do is show you how I'm walking that life. And I want to show you my self-sufficiency journey and how to be more proactive because there are things that are outside of our control and there are things that are within our control. And there are actually a lot of things outside of our control. And I don't think that it's helpful to be focusing on things that I cannot change or cannot control. So I'm not really going to be doing that anymore. I'm going to be talking about and showing you the things that are within your control uh, or the things within my control and how we can live fulfilling lives through vlogs and, and other uh, videos. Like we're going to have so much fun. I'm going to be talking about how we bought our first house, uh, about personal finances, about creating a peaceful home and, and, um, value-based spending and minimalism, um, about suburban homesteading, because that's what my husband and I are starting to do with our first house. And like, you can see that we have this lovely wood burning stove and that has been a major blessing. And honestly, anything that I want to talk about, like we're going to talk about and we're just going to have fun. So that's kind of the new direction. The new direction is the old direction for the channel. Uh, and yeah, but I just wanted to say hello again for the subscribers that might have been along for me for any political commentary. Yes, I do anticipate like I will be talking about politics in a proactive sense, but I'm not going to be talking about it in a reactive sense, but that might be um, down the road. 
So yeah. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Um, I'm just happy to share my story with people. Um, when I thought about like, oh, you know, what do I want to do with my life and what do I like to do? I want to get back to the roots and mission um, or living my vocation, doing things that spark joy for me. And the very first thing that I realized that I wanted to do or like that sparked joy for me was storytelling. Um, even when I look at my old notebooks from when I was like in first grade, second grade, like I was very young and it's like a math notebook and like there's math. But then in the margins, there's like this doodle, like a drawing of a girl who's got like a thought bubble and she's thinking about math. So, and math was not my subject. <laughs> but I'm like character creations in the margins of my math notebook. Um, and the first thing that I did when I could read and write and, and draw was to create stories and write stories. They were not very good because I was in kindergarten first grade second grade third third grade i don't know yeah mostly second grade i think if i remember correctly it was second grade um that's when i was like read like a, an avid reader like ever since i could read i wanted to write i wanted to be an author but in sixth grade you know when you're a little older a little bit more mature um the people would ask like oh what do you want to do when you grow up and I would tell them I want to be an author and I this is so heartbreaking but like basically everybody told me that that was impossible that you could not make a living and be a full-time author and and they were like oh that's all well and good like you can write but like you should have a day job have a day job but like that's impossible whatever like they were so discouraging and like looking back on it as an adult, I'm like, but JK Rowling is a full-time author. In fact, she's one of the wealthiest women in the world. There are so many authors that could be full-time authors, men and women. These people made a living off of writing. It's a business. So a writer is a business person. They're an entrepreneur, they're creative. They made full-time livings off of it. And yet these people are standing here saying like, oh, you can't do that. You can't, you can't make a full-time living off of it. Even, oh, you're a really good writer, but you should have a day job. You know how discouraging that is for somebody to be told that their dream is like impossible when clearly other people are living that dream. Like it's so crazy to me. And I know that people are coming, usually people are coming from like a positive place. Like they just want to make sure that you can put food on the table and a roof over your head. And that's all well and good. Like I appreciate that. Um, but you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, so um, that was one piece. And then the other was that when I was young, my parents had like a camcorder you know, with the little tapes in it. And I would go around and like film me and my friends and my sister and her friends. And we would do like skits and pranks on each other. Um, we were young, <laughs> but we had fun. We had a lot of fun. And then my parents got a digital camera and this was like in high school, I wanna say. And so I could finally, with the tapes, I'd like, we would have to get a converter. Uh, but when they got the digital camera, I was like, oh, I can actually like put these on the computer. And I used like Windows Media Editor, or whatever it was called. <laughs> and and I like started editing videos for the first time and publishing them on YouTube. And so you can actually look up my very first YouTube channel is called Experimental Film Crew. And that was just me and my high school friends having a good time, like um, making really dumb jokes, 
um, doing skits and stuff that we thought were funny. So when I was doing that, like I really enjoyed it and I love documentary filmmaking. I thought like, oh, it'd be so cool to be a documentary filmmaker, like Ken Burns style. And again, people were like, yeah, they were not super supportive of that. I'm like, so I, I felt like my dreams were kind of squashed in childhood. Um, and then instead I became a lawyer. Like I went to law school and became a lawyer and nothing wrong with that. I don't have any regrets. It's just when I look back on like what really sparked joy and what I was passionate about, it's writing, media production, um, just, you know, having fun, like being creative, vibing that way. Like, so yes, uh, in 2019, I was vibing. I was like, oh, what do I want to do? And like, that's really when we got started with the YouTube channel. Actually, it was 2018, I think when we post our first video. But it was like 2018, 2019, that's when we kind of got started with the YouTube, this YouTube channel, not my old one. Um, it still exists. You can go watch me as a nerdy teenager if you want to. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> oh, good times. Some of the videos are funnier than others. I will just say that. But that's why in 2019, I was like, wait, what do I want to do? I want to write a book. I want to write a novel. And so I started doing that and to publish in 2020, which I did, even though in 2019, I was vibing and I was like, oh, 2020 is my year. 2020 was everybody's year until it wasn't anymore because of the pandemic. Even though all of that went down in 2020, I still published my book in October of 2020. And I published the sequel in 2021. And I realized I'm like, yeah, I don't want to be practicing anymore as an attorney. And I really started to ask myself, I'm like, what kind of life do I want to live? Right? What kind of life do I want to live? What is a fulfilling life to me? And so that's what this YouTube channel is really going to be about. I'm going to lean into what living an empowering and free life means to me. And I'm going to share that with you. If that resonates with you, I hope that you stick around and uh, join me on this journey in suburban homesteading and being an entrepreneurial libertarian girly. So um, <laughs> thanks for joining me at least this far. And I, I hope to catch you in the next video. So um, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you never miss another video by the Fox Hollow, and please uh, comment down below, um, do hashtag new sub if you're a new subscriber so I can properly welcome you to the channel, and uh, I hope that you have a blessed day. Boy, you are good. Who are you talking to? Well, never mind, just an old friend. Oh. <laughs> what? What happened? Oh, just this. Just this. When I said that I was I was scared that I was going to go to jail, I didn't realize that, that I already was in jail. I've spent my life counting other people's money. People, people I'm smarter than. Better than. Well, well, when's Leopold Bloom going to get his share? When's it going to be Bloom's Day? I want. I want. Everything I've ever seen in the movies! <laughs> and Leo, you're gonna have it, cause we can do How it. Gonna be we can do it. Say goodbye to war and doom. With your I'm gonna be a I resist. Up together we will do. We can do it. We can do it. Every show I touch, I do. We were fated to be made. The Buddha once said, thousands of candles can be lit from a single candle, and the life of the candle will not be shortened. Happiness never decreases by being shared. 
If you're like me, you're concerned about environmental stewardship and keeping your home free of endocrine disrupting chemicals. I love candles. They elevate my home with my favorite natural scents and help me relax, especially when I'm taking Epsom salt baths. But unfortunately, most of the candles we find in stores do not burn cleanly and are made with harsh ingredients that we don't necessarily want to be breathing in our homes. That's why I reached out to a local business in my hometown. I believe in supporting artisans who create quality household items using clean ingredients. Utilizing locally harvested beeswax for simple and beautiful products, Copper and Wax brings a sense of calm to your home with their candles, incense, soap, scent diffusers, and perfume. Mindy and Michelle handcraft every candle using locally harvested beeswax, essential oils, and cotton wicks for clean burning, phthalate-free ingredients good for the home and body. Copper and Wax candles are the perfect addition to your peaceful home and also make a great gift for that special someone. Whether it's Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Christmas, a birthday, anniversary, or celebrating a new home. They have created a great selection of signature aromas. Their most popular candles are listed on the homepage. And with their new Alchemist Candle Bar, you can actually build your own unique candle. Copper and Wax provide subscription boxes so you can enjoy a new handcrafted candle for every season to brighten the spirit of your home. Use my promo code at checkout, FOXHOLLOW, for 10% off your order. Using this code supports my channel and the local creation of artisanal products here in the US, which support our mind, body, and spirit. Click on the link in the description below to shop Copper and Wax at copperwaxco.com today. Thank you for your support, and remember to always let your light shine.